Good evening. Join me. This is Drug Report Air News. Thomas Life. Drug Report Air News. Love and hope and trust and confidence. Tonight, there's something special to talk about. So, won't you join us? Hello, I'm Peter Sharoshi. And my name is Beatrix Wash. And you are watching Drug Reporter News. We will provide you news updates on international drug policy reform today. Nigeria's House of Representatives set to legalize cannabis for economic benefits. At a press conference on the benefits and opportunities of cannabis, spokesperson of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Benjamin Okezi Kalu, said Nigeria would soon legalize cannabis. This would be done largely in an attempt to diversify Nigeria's oil-dependent economy, the weakness of which was highlighted by the global oil price crash during the pandemic. The House is looking to revitalize the agriculture sector by exploring the prospects of cannabis cultivation and sale to create jobs and increase wealth in the country. The Czech Constitutional Court repealed part of the Criminal Court. In its ruling in May, the Constitutional Court of the Czech Republic repealed part of the Criminal Code concerning the cultivation of cannabis, reported the Brino Daily. The court ruled that it is unconstitutional how the government determ determined what constitutes a greater than small amount in a decree. According to, a, to the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, only the law can stipulate what conduct is a criminal offense and what punishment may be imposed. So a governmental decree is not adequate to de determine the lower limit of drugs. The verdict means that each court has to decide in the future what constitutes a greater than a small amount individually based on case law. The United States will allow more facilities to produce cannabis for medical research. The Drug Enforcement Administration announced it will issue licenses to several manufacturers to grow cannabis for research purposes. For the last 50 years, only one facility, the National Center for the Development of Natural Products at the University of Mississippi, was allowed to supply cannabis to medical researchers in the United States who wanted to study the plant's value in treating different medical conditions. Diversifying the supply is regarded by many researchers as a victory for scientific freedom, as it gives them a chance to explore the potential of multiple genetically diverse strains in cannabis products with different purity and potency. The Labour Party of Malta proposes cannabis legalization. The Times of Malta newspaper reported that Daniel Mikalev, the deputy leader of the Labour Party of Malta, announced that the Executive Council of the party voted in favour of a suit of le legislative reforms linked to cannabis, including a push for legalising the drug. In March, the government launched a public consultation process on cannabis regulations. In its white paper, the government proposed the decriminalization of up to 7 grams of cannabis possession for personal use and cultivation of up to 4 plants. Mata today reported that the government received more than 350 submissions to the public consultation from organizations and individuals. However, the Nationalist Party abstained from submitting a feedback. Zenabis Global, a pharmaceutical company, received its Maltese license in May to produce cannabis for medicinal and research purposes, after a two years process by the Malta Medicines Authority. Opportunities for Community Engagement at the AGLM 2021 The United Nations General Assembly 2021 High-Level Meeting on HIV-AIDS or AGLM will take place June 8 to 10. The Multi-Stakeholder Task Force for the AGLM has launched the AGLM 2021 Civil Society Declaration as a key piece of advocacy for community members and civil society, calling for a political declaration that recognizes explicitly who is most at risk of HIV, acknowledges why this is so, commits to fully fund and support effective responses, and holds accountable member states for their actions. For a brief overview of why the AGLM is an important opportunity for people who use drugs to advance our interests, check out the short video with Inputs Executive Director Judy Cheng and see Inputs website to find out about ways to take part. Rio de Janeiro, at least 25 people killed in the city's deadliest police raid in a favela. 
At least 25 people have been killed after heavily armed police stormed one of Rio de Janeiro's largest favelas in pursuit of drug traffickers. In what was the deadliest raid in city's history, reported the Guardian. About 200 members of Rio's civil police launched their incursion into Jacarezinho on May 6, sprinting into vast red big community as a bulletproof helicopter circled overhead with snipers posed on its, each side. By lunchtime, at least 25 people were reported dead, among them Andre Fria, a drug squad officer who was shot in the head. Police and local media described the other victims as suspects, but offered no immediate evidence for that claim. Santos Silva, a researcher from Rio Center for Studies on Public Security and Citizenship, said his city's war on drugs was effective when it came to killing, but did nothing to protect citizens or reduce crime. It's repugnant, he said, of the photographs showing Jacarezinho's streets littered with dead bodies. MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD shows successful results in phase three trials. The multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies has announced that the results of the first phase three trial of MDMA-assisted therapy for post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD indicates that it may be an effective treatment of symptoms of PTSD. In the randomized blinded phase three trial, 67% of the participants received MDMA compared to 32% of the participants that received placebo no longer qualified for a PTSD diagnosis after three treatment sessions. Results indicate that MDMA assisted therapy can be effective for PTSD resulting from any cause. People with the most difficult to treat diagnosis, often considered intractable, respond just as well to this novel treatment as study participants. In fact, participants diagnosed with the dissociative subtype of PTSD experienced a greater reduction in their symptoms than those without the dissociative subtype, said Jennifer Mitchell, the lead author of the paper published in Nature magazine, detailing the results of the study. Thank you so much for watching. These are our news for May 2021. If you like this episode, please support our drug reporter and follow us on social media because we cannot do this work without you. See you next month. Bye. Thank you for joining us. What we've been able to achieve has been done with your help. Now we go on to the next stop, making a, a final commitment. Now we need your support again. Support drug and report their news. Today, 